Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here, the garden city of British Columbia on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a great week and is looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Welcome, Manny Deep. Welcome, members. This is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch, and we are focusing on IELTS Task 1 Writing, and we will look specifically at writing a band 9 line chart response. Line charts being one of the most common types of Task 1 questions in the academic IELTS. Welcome to our moderator, uh, Carolina. Good to have you here. Uh, while we wait for a few more members and peers to join in, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com, as well as gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have lots and lots of information and help for your writing, as well as your speaking and the other sections of the IELTS exam. Hi, June. Hi, Rashika. Fadhil, good to see you in the class. Uh, this is our academic IELTS web portal here with the blue background. Uh, you can click this big red button to join our premium package. We are an official IELTS registration center and certified agents. And for the general IELTS, it's the green background, and you can click this big red button to join us there. Again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access, and for task one general IELTS, this is where you want to go for letter writing and email writing. You can check that out there. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure to get our apps, Academic IELTS Help and general IELTS help, and you can link your app to your web account for an integrated learning experience. For Instagram, visit IELTS underscore AE help and GLS help. And if you have questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. All right, so we have task one right now, then we'll do listening parts three and parts four from the exam that we started yesterday and on Saturday we'll have two classes on speaking. Here is our IELTS task one writing question of the day. Uh, when you get to the writing section after the reading section members, uh, the first thing that you want to do is just take a deep breath, okay? Uh, the, the reading section is fairly intense. It's high octane because you have to go through the three passages in the one hour and uh, there's a lot of information there with the questions and the reading. So uh, it's good to just take a five second breather between the reading and starting your writing just so you can kind of reset your brain Okay, when you get into the writing section. And then you open up your booklet or you see the uh, writing question on your computer screen, always start with task one. Task one should be easier than task two. It's a shorter task. It's 20 minutes. It's half the length of task uh, two. And you start by reading the question very, very carefully, making sure that you uh, really pay attention to the details. So here we go. Uh, let's read this together. The following chart, oh, well, let's go back here. You should spend about 20 minutes on this task. Uh, the following chart compares the change in temperatures uh, for four cities in a given year. Okay. Uh, report the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Uh, you should write at least 150 words, and that's very true, okay? Uh, it's minimum 150 words. In order to get a high band score, like a band seven, eight, nine, your essay here should be much closer to 200, maybe even 220 uh, words, okay? It's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to get a band nine with just exactly 150 words, okay? 
All right. So uh, once you've read the question, look at the chart. Okay. So here we're actually looking at a monthly average temperature. Okay, monthly average temperature. And then here we have uh, the temperature in Celsius on the left. Okay, this is your y-axis. This is referred to as the y-axis. Uh, and the y-axis goes from negative 10, 0, 10, 20, all the way up to 30. And then at the bottom here, we have the month starting with January and then going all the way to December. Okay, I'm just doing a little bit of uh, writing over those so that you can see it clear. And then here we have the names of the cities. So we have Tokyo, New York, Berlin, and London. All right. So those are the four cities. And that's what we have in this line graph, plus, of course, all of the lines. So this is Tokyo, this first one. This one here is London. And then we have New York. And then we have uh, Berlin. Okay, so those are kind of the start points. All right, so we observe the graph. We observe the y-axis. Then we observe the x-axis. Then we observe the legend, okay, that tells us what is what. And then we look at the specific data points, okay? Always, of course, observe the title of the graph as well. Okay, so now that we have this and we've gone through step one, reading the question, step two, looking at the graph, uh, what do I do now? So what's my next step? I've collected this information. Now it's time to start writing. What do I do? So what is the next step after all of this? Welcome to Pika. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Nick Hill. Good to have even more members in the class. That's fantastic. Okay. So you have 20 minutes for uh, task one writing. So you really have to be kind of very systematic in your writing approach for the academic. It's just going to be step one, step two, step three. And you're going, going, going. Okay, June says paraphrase. Nick Hill says paraphrase the question with details. Yeah, always remember that important second half. So paraphrase the question with details. And there's usually enough details that your paraphrasing is going to be at least twice the length of the original. Okay. So when you paraphrase the question and add a good amount and we can say band nine amount uh, of details your introduction uh, should be roughly uh, twice the length of the original question Okay, so that's, it's not every time and it's not exactly, but that's roughly how you should think about it. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. Uh, here we have the question and this is the introductory paragraph. Okay, so introduction. All right. Um, so I'm going to paraphrase this. You do the same members and then we'll compare. All right. And keep in mind the information from the graph. You should retain what you saw in the graph. You shouldn't have to look at a graph like this every moment. Okay. So
All right, I can see that everybody else is also working hard on their paraphrasing, which is good. And notice what I'm doing. So I wrote my original paraphrase, which was this line graph uh, shows a comparison in the fluctuation of average temperatures as measured in degrees Celsius uh, for Tokyo, London, New York, and Berlin. And now I'm thinking about how I can add in the information uh, from the uh, X and Y axes, okay? So uh, you can usually do that by using commas. So here, as measured in degrees Celsius, and now I'm adding in information by putting a comma here uh, from negative 10 or minus 10 to plus 30 uh, degrees with intervals of 10 degrees, okay? And now I'm trying to think about how I can add in uh, the um, months of the year as well. And uh, average temperatures from January to December as measured in degrees Celsius from negative 10 to plus 30 with intervals of 10 degrees for Tokyo, London, New York and Berlin. Okay, so now I have most of that information uh, from the graph in there. Uh, and now it's roughly twice the uh, amount of words as in the original question with the maximum uh, capacity for detail, okay? So that's always what you're going for. All right, June writes, this line graph depicts the fluctuations of monthly average temperature with the interval of 10 degrees Celsius for four uh, metropolises, Tokyo, New York, Berlin, and London throughout a specific year. Yeah, and it's not actually a specific year. That was uh, when I made the question. I was a little bit inattentive. It should read, the following chart compares the average temperatures. temperatures for four cities in any given year. That would be more accurate, okay? All right. Uh, Depika says, this line graph depicts the fluctuation of temperature among four cities, Tokyo, London, New York, and Berlin in 12 months from January to December. Depika, good. Uh, remember that between is two, among is more than two. So because we have four cities here, it's among and not between, okay? Uh, Nick Hill says the line graph illustrates the comparison in the variation of monthly average temperature measured in degrees Celsius from negative 10 to 30 with intervals of 10 degrees for Tokyo, London, Berlin, and New York. Nick Hill, very good. That's very, very synonymous with my introduction as well. Um, and it's good, yeah, so nicely done. All right, and then when you're done your introduction, you are looking for the main feature, okay? So I'm just gonna move this below here so that uh, we can work a little bit more smoothly. Okay, and of course, in your actual IELTS essay, don't write introduction, just write, okay? So once again, this line graph shows a comparison in the fluctuation of average temperatures from January to December as measured in degrees Celsius from negative 10 to positive 30 with intervals of 10 degrees for Tokyo, London, New York, and Berlin. Um, okay. Comparison's good. Another word that you can use is correlation. Okay, line graphs are often used to show relationships among different independent variables, in this case, the cities. So you could also use the word correlation instead of comparison. Okay. All right, now comes the overview, which oddly in the IELTS has to be a separate paragraph. Um, and the overview is the main feature. It's kind of what you see, 
Okay, so what is the most observable feature? All right, and here we have a very, very obvious most observable feature, and I want to give you a chance to describe it first. So I'm sure all of you uh, will recognize that the most observable feature is that these four cities have this kind of uh, pattern, okay? Uh, what is that kind of pattern called in English? So when you have this up and then this down, um, what, what is that shape or what is that called, okay? Uh, yeah, June, good question. So June is asking, should we use intervals or should we use interval? Um, yeah, June, to be more precise, it is with an interval of 10 degrees. Yeah. So it is a singular because it's a single interval. Yeah, it's an interval of 10 degrees. So with an interval of 10 degrees. Yeah, that's a good, good correction. It, both are okay, June, but if we want to be extremely technical with an interval of uh, 10 degrees is more accurate, okay? There's multiple intervals, so it's okay, but with the technical, yeah, it would be more of an interval of 10 degrees, okay? All right. Uh, Rashika writes, the line graph illustrates the average temperature alterations in four regions, Tokyo, London, New York, and Berlin in 12 months. Um, Rashika, it's okay. Alterations and uh, regions is a little bit awkward. So these are cities or metropolitan areas. Okay. All right. Um, Deepika says ebb and flow. Nope. Uh, Nick Hill says uh, parabolic. Yep, yeah, that's good. Uh, Depika says bell shaped. Um, bell shaped is okay, but uh, parabolic is more technical. So parabolic, you'll get more points for good vocabulary use. Okay, so your writing section is being marked on your lexical resource. So the vocabulary that you're using and bell shaped is okay. It's descriptive. Uh, Depika, but um, what Nick Hill and Rashika are saying, parabolic, those are more uh, accurate. Okay, that's the more technical way to express this. So this is a parabolic pattern. Okay, so that's what you want to use. All right. Uh, Nick Hill writes, overall, it is evident that the fluctuation of temperatures parabolic over a year uh, trends increase for the first half of the year and decrease for remaining months. Um, yeah, okay, exactly, Nick Hill. So that would be a good overview, all right? So that's what we want to do, is we want to uh, describe this pattern of temperature throughout the year. Can everybody do that? So I want to give you a head start. So now that you know it's a parabolic shape, and as Nick Hill cleverly pointed out, it starts low, increases into the middle of the year, June, July, August. And then after August, you start to see a decline in these average temperatures. So go ahead and write this um, overview. That's absolutely your overview, okay? All right. I'm going to do the same and I'm going to be a little bit silent so you can focus on your own writing and then I'll take a look at what you have up there. Okay.
All right. So, All right, so um, some uh, fresh batteries. Thank you, uh, Carolina, yeah, and Devonch for letting me know. Yeah, so fresh batteries in the microphone, and we are ready to continue. Okay, so uh, June for the overview rights. At first glance, one can notice here. Let me just get the graph here so you can see what June is writing about. At first glance, one can notice that the variations in average temperatures among all four cities follow a similar parabolic pattern, which includes an increasing trend during the first half of the year and a decreasing trend in the second half. Okay, that's good writing, June. Uh, however, I do think you can be a bit more concise. It seems a little bit wordy. So, Try to be concise. It's good writing, but again, you want to be as concise as possible. Uh, Depika writes, noticeably, all the four cities have a parabolic pattern with temperatures reaching as high as 25 degrees Celsius and as low as zero degrees Celsius. Uh, Depika, you have to be a little bit careful. In your overview, I wouldn't actually indicate the numbers because here for Berlin in January, uh, we're actually below just slightly, but we're still below zero degrees Celsius. And for Tokyo, we're actually above uh, 25 degrees Celsius. So it's a little bit off. Uh, I would um, refrain, refrain means not do, uh, refrain from including that specific numeric data in this overview okay i would keep that for the analyses okay all right um so now that we've written our overview we want to uh write some data points okay now looking at this line graph, um, what would be the first data point? So what would you write about first? Line graphs, especially when you have uh, time, like January, February, March, April, May, June, July, uh, all the way to December. So when you have a timeline, it definitely makes sense to start at the beginning of the timeline. So in January, okay, so that would be my first data point. And um, what would we want to include for this first data point? Okay, so what do we want to talk about? So we want to talk about this, these data points here. Okay, this is going to be number one. And I would probably discuss the range here of these four cities. So with a line graph, you should not think about writing about each of these points because there's no way you'll have enough time and it won't make a lot of sense, right? 
So maybe talk about this range uh, here for New York and uh, Berlin. We have kind of an interesting uh, similarity as well. Okay, uh, so uh, what would be my second data point? So what would be my second data point after this one here in uh, January? Okay. Let's see if we kind of have the same logical flow of ideas. So after number one here, what would be the second data point? What do you think? So Carolina says uh, July. Okay. So we can go month by month. So we can talk about uh, the months here. So talk about July. You're right. Carolina, we could do it like that. Uh, we could also break it into cities. So discuss the pattern that each city experiences. Okay. Yeah. Some of these cities peak in July, while some of the other cities like uh, Tokyo peak in August, right? So that could maybe be my third data point. Okay. Um, yeah, and Devonch is saying that uh, in March, around March, uh, we also have some interesting data where um, New York, so this red line here is New York. And if you look at New York, New York's quite interesting because it starts very, very low, like Berlin, but then it has the highest or uh, greatest increase in average temperatures throughout the year, all the way to July where it's basically equal with Tokyo by the time uh, summer hits or middle of summer, okay? So that could be a good, so this could be a second data point here. This could be a third data point, and then this could be a fourth one. So New York could be an interesting one as well, okay? All right, and then we could maybe write about the finish here where there's a rapid decline. So New York has this rapid incline and rapid decline. So when you're in this kind of a line graph, you definitely want to decide whether you want to go by months and look at some key periods in the months here, okay? Or whether you want to go city by city and describe the pattern of each city more precisely. You've discussed the parabolic pattern. You said, okay, well, each of these shows a parabolic pattern, and then now you could get into some more precise patterns. So start in January, describe this here, and then break it into uh, cities, okay? All right, so um, what I would do, okay, thinking critically about this, is rather than comparing months I would do cities. So I would start with number one here, comparing the start point, and then I would do uh, New York second, okay? Um, I would do uh, maybe, well, actually, now that I'm thinking out loud, I would probably do Tokyo second, okay? Because it has the highest temperatures throughout the year, uh, then I would do New York third, and then I would actually do uh, Berlin and London together as number four. Does everybody kind of see my logic there? So for me, if I'm really paying attention, and if I'm choosing the path of least resistance, meaning the easiest approach to my body paragraph, to have clarity and to have good detail, I would actually describe this start point and then break into cities and talk about uh, Tokyo, then New York, and then uh, Berlin and London. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? So let's do that. Let's first discuss, you'll see as we write this, that it's very sensible and it's the easiest read. You always have to think about your audience and your reader, what is going to be the easiest for them uh, to understand. So uh, let's talk about this kind of start point here. Firstly, 
And then uh, we'll get into each city specifically. Okay. All right. So uh, let's do this and uh, we'll compare. Uh, first mention the range uh, in temperatures in January. And then we'll break into discussing Tokyo in a little bit more detail. Okay. All right. Uh, by the way, just uh, so you're kind of on the same page as me, here, uh, Berlin and London are at zero degrees. Uh, what's another way to express the concept of zero degrees temperature? So again, you're always looking for lexical resource interpretation in your task one writing. Um, what is a good way to express zero degrees temperature instead of writing they're both close to zero degrees temperature? Anybody? Okay. So Yeah, freezing point. Exactly. That's what I was looking for. So when we're looking at temperatures, right, we want to know uh, when we are close to the freezing point. Very good, Fadhil. Very good, June. Yeah, the freezing point. Absolutely. So firstly, in January, these four cities' temperatures range from zero to eight degrees. Okay, now... Um, I don't actually know the shortcut to using the degree symbol, but in the actual IELTS, if I were writing this on, on the paper-based exam, because on the computer-based exam, I probably wouldn't search for the symbol unless I know it. Um, so I would actually use the, act, the little symbol for degrees instead of writing the word, okay? So whenever possible, you should always use the symbol instead of the word. So instead of writing percent, you should use the symbol percent. Instead of writing dollars, you should use the symbol for dollars, okay? So don't waste time on writing out words unless you're in the computer-based exam and you don't know, like me, where this little degree symbol is or how to create that, okay? So otherwise, use the symbol whenever possible. If somebody can tell us uh, on the QWERTY keyboard, how do you actually create that little degree symbol, I would appreciate it. It's not on my keyboard, but if you know the shift or control command for that, let me know. Okay, so firstly in January, these four cities temperatures range from zero to eight degrees with London and Berlin, uh, close to freezing point, and uh, Tokyo at eight degrees. Okay, and I'm not even going to write that with London and Berlin close to freezing point. All right, <coughs> so I'm not going to worry about New York and. Uh, Tokyo, because I've already says, said that they range to 8 degrees, so we can assume that New York and Tokyo are close to 8 degrees, okay? Uh, go ahead, members, and write these sentences as I write them, or as you write them, uh, so that we can compare. Um, so now I'm going to talk about uh, Tokyo, and Tokyo having, uh, on average, the highest temperatures throughout the year, okay? So on average, Tokyo
All right. Uh, Carolina says it's alt plus zero one seven six. Is it that? Uh, or it's alt plus any one of those numbers. Okay, let me just try that. So alt zero, nope. Alt one, nope. Alt seven, nope. Alt six. Uh, they don't seem to work for me. I'll have to figure that out, Carolina. All right. Hope I don't have to push zero. All of them together. Oh, that is so complicated. So alt zero one seven uh six okay i think i'm just gonna stick with writing degrees celsius all right um Depeka says berlin and new york start off january with temperatures between negative one to zero degrees celsius which are almost freezing cold london and tokyo have higher uh temperatures from four to Eight degrees Celsius. Thank you for that, Depika. I think I actually uh, wrote some wrong information here. Um, yeah, because you're right. It's New York and Berlin that have zero degrees temperatures, and London and uh, Tokyo are a little bit higher. So we do have to be very, very careful with information mistakes. They do matter. Okay. All right. So. It's uh, New York. And New York, I would just shorten to NY. And if I want to shorten New York to NY, technically what I should be doing is uh, when I have my first words, New York, here in the introduction, um, I can, in brackets, put NY so that for the rest of the essay, I don't have to write New York over and over again. I can just write NY, okay? That's the technical rule in writing. So the first time you have to write the words, and then in brackets, you write the first letter of each word to create the acronym. And now for the rest of the essay, I can use just the acronym. So I don't have to write New York over and over again, okay? All right, so I have my analysis. Okay. And firstly, in January, these four cities' temperatures range from zero to eight degrees with New York and Berlin close to freezing point, okay? And somehow it's deleted my thing about Tokyo. So let's see what that is. Okay, it's because I have it in the wrong spot. All right. Okay, so on average, Tokyo has the highest temperatures throughout the years among uh, these cities um, starting at eight degrees in January. And I had a missing word there. I was hoping you would help me figure out what I should put in there. Um, so starting at eight degrees in January, and this is a missing verb here. Let me know what verb you think should go in here. Uh, to 28 degrees in August. Then uh, dropping to uh, 10 degrees by the end of the year. Okay. Um, so uh, what verb should I put in here for uh, Tokyo? So when you have this kind of, especially with temperature, this is a good verb to use. So you have Tokyo starting at about eight degrees and then it's doing something 
all the way to August to uh, 28 degrees. What verb is good to describe, especially with temperature? Uh, don't just use the word increase, okay? That's clear. Everybody knows that word, I think. You should know that word if you're going to sit the IELTS exam. So instead of increasing, uh, peaking, that's what it does here. But what is the actual progressive verb here, Depika, of going up to this point? Okay. Uh, rise is in, that's not the word I'm looking for, Nick Hill. There's a better verb, especially when we are talking about temperature. Not rise, not rising. That's just a very basic synonym for increasing. When you have a hill, think about like a little mountain or a hill. What do you do? Uh, not enhance, Kush, that's not the right word. So when you have a little mountain, what do you do? If you're a little human, yeah, exactly, you're climbing. That's right, June. So temperature climbs to 28 degrees. Climb is a very good word to use in this case. So June writes, Tokyo has the highest temperature on average throughout the year with 8 degrees in January and all the way climbing to its peak value of 27 degrees in July. Yeah, so the accuracy of the verbs that you choose is very important as well. Okay, now I have this in the wrong place. I've realized that. So I'm going to take this out and stick it into the analysis here. So there we go. Uh, firstly... Uh, in January, these four cities' temperatures range from 0 to 8 degrees, with London and Berlin close to free freezing point. Uh, on average, Tokyo has the highest temperatures throughout the year among these cities, starting at 8 degrees in January and climbing to 28 degrees in August, then dropping to 10 degrees by the end of the year. So climbing is a good verb to use here. Climbing, and remember that silent B when you write climbing. All right. So uh, now I'm going to um, talk about New York. So New York uh, is interesting because it has the greatest uh, change in temperature throughout the year, right? So I can write that, okay? I'm going to speed up a little bit here so we can uh, see the whole essay, but go ahead and write uh, these points, okay? So All right. Um, so secondly, New York has the greatest change in average temperatures in the year, beginning with zero degrees in January and getting as hot as Tokyo in July before dropping back down to just four degrees in December. Now, if I want to be specific with this temperature, I can uh, say at uh, 25 degrees. Okay. Uh, before dropping down. I think there was a question in the chat. I'll check who that was asking um, if we shouldn't be more specific. Uh, somebody asked me that, like, shouldn't we be more specific? It's not a bad idea to include a few numbers into your uh, 
uh, analyses, like saying 25 degrees for that actual point. However, the most important to get those high band scores like band eight and band nine in um, task one is to have good interpretation. If you're just talking about the degrees, and I see sometimes students do that where they go, oh, it's this degrees and then this degrees and then this degrees and then this degrees, uh, you're not going to get a very high band score. You might get a six or a six five, but you won't get a band eight or a band nine because when you discuss graphs and charts like in university or college as the author or as the presenter your goal is always to interpret data okay so to make comparisons and interpret highs and lows and significant changes okay so <clears throat> Let's do that now for Berlin and London. So um, Berlin and London are very, very similar, okay? And now I could digress into explaining these changes in the month of uh, April and the month of September, uh, but it's more important for me to explain to the reader that they're quite close in temperature. So throughout the year, um, the temperature difference between Berlin and London is only a few degrees, okay? So that's my most important point here, all right? So finally, both Berlin and London show relatively similar temperatures throughout the year. Um, with only a few degrees of variance in any given month. Okay, and then if I have time and if I'm going for that band nine and being quick and clever, I can just say that during the uh, summer months, Berlin is a bit warmer than uh, London. We can see that. And during the um, uh, spring and fall, well, let's see where we're at exactly. So, well, I could go month by month here if I really wanted to uh, and not break it into seasons. So here I have April and here I have September. So between an April and September, okay, Berlin is slightly warmer. And from September to April, uh, London is slightly uh, warmer or we can say Berlin is slightly cooler. Okay, hopefully everybody sees that, All right? So from April to September. Now, if you're really quick and clever in the IELTS, uh, I would actually recommend abbreviating months, okay? So that uh, you're saving time and energy and space for uh, more information rather than writing out the full words, okay? Oh, no, Depika. when we say freezing point in general, we're referring definitely to water. You don't have to say freezing point of, wa of uh, water, okay? You don't have to have that level of specificity. So from April to September, Berlin is slightly warmer than London. Conversely, it is slightly cooler in the other uh, months. Okay. So that's it. All right. So f instead of saying supersede or crosses over. It's just clear to interpret it in this way, okay? Uh, hopefully everybody sees that, right? So 
Um, from April to September, Berlin is slightly warmer than London. Conversely, it is slightly cooler in the other months. So I wouldn't say things like in April it surpasses and so on. It's a little bit confusing, okay? And now if I wanted to add a summary, um, what could I summarize about this? So what would be a logical summary, some kind of information that we can learn from this graph? Okay. What do you think? What can we learn from this graph? <clears throat> There's definitely something that we can learn from this graph. Uh, let's see if you get the same thing that I get. Okay. Uh, we can make some inferences about their geographic locations. You have to be careful not to make great assumptions. I would do something like this. Okay. All right, so we can make these assumptions, all right? In summary, or sorry, not assumptions, these inferences. So in summary, looking at these average temperatures, it is clear that all four of these cities experience four seasons, spring, summer, winter, and fall, and are located in the Northern Hemisphere. Because if we were talking about, uh, for instance, a city in Australia, uh, then you would probably not see that kind of a pattern, but you would see the inverse of that pattern, okay? So here's my whole essay. Now I'm going to read it to make sure that it's sensible. Uh, let's go from the top. So this line graph shows a comparison in the fluctuation of average temperatures from January to December as measured in degrees Celsius from negative 10 to positive 30 with an interval of 10 degrees for Tokyo, London, New York, and Berlin, okay? Uh, so this is the first time that I use the word New York. So I'm gonna use the synonym after, okay? New York, again, just a reminder. I don't like the word fluctuation because that means up and down. And although it's okay, I want to use a more precise word. So this line graph shows a comparison in the I'm just going to keep it change of average temperatures. Okay, so immediately it is clear that all four of these cities have a parabolic pattern in regards to changes in temperature with an increase in temperature for the first half of the year and then a decrease in the second half. Firstly, in January, these four cities' temperatures range from 0 to 8 degrees, with London and Berlin close to freezing. Okay, that's obviously not correct there with London and Berlin, as I mentioned before. Be very careful of uh, information mistakes. So New York and Berlin close to freezing point. On average, Tokyo has the highest temperatures throughout the year among these cities, starting at 8 degrees in January and climbing to 28 degrees in August, uh, then dropping to 10 degrees by the end of the year. Secondly, New York has the greatest change in average temperatures in the year, beginning with zero degrees in January and getting as hot as Tokyo in July at 25 degrees before dropping back down to just four degrees in December. Finally, both Berlin and London show relatively similar temperatures throughout the year. I have an unnecessary preposition that kind of hung around there throughout the year with only a few degrees of variance in any given month. From April to September, Berlin is slightly warmer than London. Conversely, it is slightly cooler 
in the other months. Okay. In summary, looking at these average temperatures, it is clear that all four of these cities experience four seasons, spring, summer, winter, and fall, and are located in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, and I can see June appreci appreciates the uh, geographic common sense. All right, so there's my essay. I'm happy with it. In order to write the essay like this, it was really important for me to take a moment when looking at the line graph to figure out the right approach. So instead of going month by month, I realized that it's better to just go city by city. Okay. All right. I will post this um, essay on our YouTube community board for everybody to look at later on. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me in this class. Uh, stick around because I will be back in 30 minutes with uh, the listening section, part three and part four, that's continuing from yesterday's class. So um, good effort today, everybody that was in the class. Thank you so much, Carolina, for moderating uh, the chat and contributing. Uh, if you didn't get a chance, students, to finish this essay, then uh, after the classes this morning, do it as homework. So finish this essay in your own time, okay, with your own words. Try not to look at my sample, only at the end so that you can compare them, okay? You're very welcome, David. All right, everyone, for lots more help, lots more HD videos, check us out at aehelp.com. Uh, we've got lots of HD videos on pie charts, uh, bar graphs, uh, diagrams, maps, flow charts. So check that out. And for task one writing uh, for the general IELTS, it's gltshelp.com. Visit us there. Uh, take a short break. Come back in 30 minutes and join me again for some listening section strategies and practice. I'm Adrian signing out from Victoria for now. See you soon. Bye.